One of the things I love about the Christmas season is all of the lights. I mean, it's just so amazing as you go from house to house looking at them. And I think the reason for that is that Christmas just has this ability to lighten up the world around us. And even the darkest of times. And even in the darkest and craziest of seasons. In fact, in the Northern Hemisphere, in December, we have what we call the winter solstice, which is the day of the year that is the longest night and the shortest day. But that's just one of the reasons, I think, why I love Christmas so much. Because when everything else starts getting dark around us, dark and gloomy, all of a sudden, at least for a day, it seems like the world around us just seems to lighten up just a little bit. And I love that. And even during this time of COVID, this weird time that we're living in, Christmas still seems to have a way of lightening up the world around us. In fact, did you know that light is a major theme in the Bible? I don't know if you knew that. The Bible says, for example, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. The Bible says that the first act of all creation was let there be light. That's right. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And on Christmas, the very first Christmas, light played a major role in that story. The angels put on a spectacular light show for the shepherds when they announced, Behold, born this day in the city of David is a Savior, Christ the Lord. And when the wise men followed that star, some kind of bright star, we don't know exactly what it was, that led them from the east to the west to find Jesus, light just played a major role because Christmas is a celebration of God's light entering into our world. It even split history into A.D. and B.C., the single most important event in history when God came to this earth in human form. But what does it mean when it talks about God sending Jesus to be the light of the world? In John 1, it says this, Before anything else existed, there was Christ with God. He has always been alive and is himself God. He created everything. Did you know that? He created everything. The Bible says Jesus created everything. Eternal life was in him. and His life gives light to all of mankind. His light is the light that shines through the darkness, and the darkness cannot extinguish it. Love that. But what does it mean? It just means that Jesus Christ is the light that lights up all of mankind. It is his light that cannot be hidden. It cannot be extinguished. And that he wants to use to light up all the darkness in our life. Now, he's not talking about physical darkness here, obviously. He's talking about a spiritual darkness. See, when I'm separated from God, when I'm trying to do my own thing, my own way, I'm in spiritual darkness. When I'm separated from God and you're trying to do your own thing, you you are in spiritual darkness. That's why things don't make sense to us, right? It's why you can't figure it out. And you go, why is this happening to me? I don't get it. And it's because you're in this spiritual darkness at that point. For some of you, 2020 was a very dark year. Let's just be honest. You're glad it's over. The coronavirus, the civil unrest, the elections, they all, and they all just did a number on you. But now you're looking forward in hope that 2021 will be a better year. I mean, there's already talk of a vaccine, right? Some of you, you lost your job this year, you were laid off. Some of you went into bankruptcy or you had a major financial problem. Some of you had a relational crisis, a huge one, with your husband or with your wife or your kids or your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Some of you went through a divorce. Some of you had a death of a loved one, maybe not even COVID-related. You went through cancer treatment or you had a disease. There's just a lot of different things that you went through this year. Maybe you went through a conflict too, or maybe you've just gone through a midlife crisis, but whatever the case, it's been a tough year. And if that describes you at all, God has saved the very best for last. At the end of this year, what he wants to do is he wants to lighten up your life on Christmas Eve. So he brought you to tune into this sermon tonight, right? And I want to make a guarantee as you watch. If you will listen for the next few minutes and you'll think about what we're talking about, what the Bible says, and and if you'll open up your life to the light of God's love, I promise you will enter 2021 with a new level of brightness and clarity and understanding that you didn't think was possible. If you'll just let God in, I promise, God can heal the darkness in your life. In fact, that's why Jesus came, right? Right? He came so many years ago lying in a manger to do that very thing. But do you understand that? I mean, do you really know why Jesus came? Do you know what he came to do? That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Because I think, really, once you understand what Jesus Christ came to do, 
going to get more and more excited about Christmas. So let's take a look. Why did he come? Why is it exactly that we celebrate this whole Christmas season? One of the first things he says is he came to light up our minds and let us know what God is really all about. What do you mean here, light up my mind? Have you ever had a flash of insight that said, I mean, it was like a light bulb just went off in your mind? That's what's called enlightenment. All of a sudden, something you couldn't figure out before, all of a sudden, it made sense to you. And the light went on. And the light bulb went on in your life, and you were enlightened, and you got it, and all of a sudden, things were clear. And you went, that makes sense now. Now I know why that happened in my life. Now I can see what God's been doing all along. And you understand more and more and more. So the first benefit of knowing Jesus Christ is that our confusion is replaced with his clarity. It's amazing. But things just get a whole lot clearer when you get to know Jesus. You see yourself clear. You see God clear. You see your life clear. You see problems clear. You see other people clear. Because all of a sudden, it's like a light has been turned on in your life. And so he says, I am the light of the world. I want you to notice a couple of verses with this. The Bible says, understanding God's word brings light to the minds of ordinary people. He says, in other words, when you understand this book, God's word, then all of a sudden it becomes clear what life is really all about. Again, it says, Satan binds the minds of people so that they cannot see the light, which is the good news about Christ, who shows us what God is like. So let me ask you, what are you confused about right now in your life? Are you confused about the future? I don't know what I'm supposed to do next year. Are you confused about relationships in your life? I don't know how to get on with it. I don't know how to get out of it. I I don't know what to do. Are you confused about your finances, maybe? Or your health? Or some other thing in your life? Well, then you need to let God's light shine into your life to find that clarity. Notice what Jesus says in John 12. He says, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. Jesus said again, I don't want you to be in the dark anymore. I don't want you to be in the dark about your life anymore, about yourself, about your problems. But most of all, I don't want you to be in the darkness about what God is really like. So Jesus came to earth to show us exactly what he was like. He came to show us that we matter to him. He came to show us how much he loves us. He came to save us from the mess we call life. Why else did he come? He came to tell us the truth. That's the second one. Jesus said, this is why I came into the world, to tell people the truth. And I thought, isn't that refreshing? I mean, do you ever get tired of people lying to you all the time? You go to work, you turn on your news, you talk to Detroit Lions football, right? But nobody ever tells you the truth. They tell you what they think you want to hear. You know, this season's going to be different. They're going to be awesome this year. But they're not, and they know it. In fact, sometimes even your friends don't have the courage to tell you the truth. Why? Because confrontation's hard, to be honest. Because they don't want to upset you. Because they're afraid they're going to lose your friendship somehow. They're afraid that you won't be able to handle it. They're afraid that you'll be rejected. They want to be politically correct or some other reason, I guess, that's going on in their head. But they don't want to tell you the truth. So the fact is there's only one person who will always, I mean, always tell you the truth in your life no matter what. And it's God. And he'll tell you the truth no matter what is going on. And he does it because, listen to this, because he loves you. Let me give you an example of this. You go to the doctor, right, and you're not feeling well. And the doctor does a diagnosis and he says, I hate to tell you this, but I've got to tell you the truth. You've got X, and then he names your illness, your disease, your sickness, or whatever's going on, right? Is the doctor being judgmental as he tells you that? No, he's doing it because he cares about you, because he wants you to get better. When he tells you the truth, it's not to hurt you, it's to help you out. It's not to harm you, it's to help you get better. So he's not doing it in judgment, he's just telling the truth because he wants to help you. And He says, now, let's get a plan for this. So when God talks to you about your life, he doesn't always say the things that you want to hear, does he? But I'll tell you this, he always tells you the truth. And it's always for your benefit. It's always for your good. So when he says things like this, I don't want you going down that street because it's a dead end. It'll mess you up. It'll mess up your life. You'll waste your time and your life and your energy and your money. Don't go that way. Don't even get involved in that kind of lifestyle because these are the end results. 
I want you to do these things over here, right? Over here. I, I don't want you to do the things over here. And when he does it, he's not being judgmental or limiting. He's doing it because he loves you. And because he knows what will make you happy more than you do. Because God is God and you're just not. Because he created you and he knows exactly how you work. Because he wants always what is best for you. Because he loves you. So he calls out to you tonight and he says, follow me, I will give you peace. I came to heal your hurts. That's the last one. And this is big, right? I've talked to a lot of people over the years and I've discovered one thing that is just true. It just seems to always be true. Everybody has a hidden wound. Everybody. Everybody has a place where they're hurting in their life that's hidden from everybody else and they just don't know about it. Now, you may be hiding it well. A lot of you are. You appear sophisticated. You appear cool. You appear hip. You've always got it together. I, and I get it. You guys are amazing. You truly are. But, but we know that we don't have it all together, at least personally, right? Because nobody does. And we feel that reality. And no matter how much we push it down, it surfaces again and again, enough to where we're very aware of the pain. Maybe something that happened a long time ago even. Something that was said to you and it just hurt and it stuck. Something that was done to you and it hurt. Maybe it was something you did and you just can't get over it, over the regret, over the pain, over the shame that you feel as a result. You feel guilty about it. You've tried to bury it. You just don't want anybody else to know because it's painful, because it's embarrassing. But it still hurts, doesn't it? Then at Christmas time, we come and it's supposed to be this amazingly happy time. We say, this is the season to celebrate. This is the season of good cheer. But in reality, for a lot of people at Christmas, man, it, they're just lonely. And a lot of people at Christmas are hurting. A lot of people at Christmas are going to hang out with family members and there are unresolved issues there. They don't really want to see them. There are all kinds of undercurrents and unresolved conflict so they're stressed out and they're depressed. I mean, not everybody has one of those Hallmark card sort of families, right? But here's the good news. No matter where you are hurting, Jesus Christ can heal it. I don't care if it's resentment or worry or guilt or fear or bitterness or boredom. I don't care what it is. Jesus Christ can heal your hurt. He's the light of the world. Kind of think about it like this. Doctors today have discovered there's just all sorts of healing power in light. As an example today, they use light in all kinds of different ways. They use light therapy for stimulating the hippothampus or whatever it's called. They, they use it in surgeries, you know, anyways. We're all familiar with lasers. Now think about laser surgery for the eyes just for a moment. They're going to use a light to give us sight. That's the principle. You need the light to get the sight so that you can see life as it really is again. Are you starting to maybe see the parallel here? It's that you need God's light in your life so that you can truly see, truly see life as it really is again. And all the doctors and the surgeries are amazing today. Here's the deal. Only God can heal a broken heart. Only God can heal a broken spirit. Only God can heal a broken relationship. Only God can heal a broken dream. And he says to us tonight, come to me because I came to heal your hurt. In fact, that's why Jesus came to save us. The Bible says this, John 12, I did not come to judge the world, but to save it. Jesus said, I didn't come to tell you how messed up you are. I mean, to be fair, that's probably pretty self-evident already for most of us. But he said, I came to save you guys. In other words, you guys, you need a savior. That's why the angels at the very first Christmas said, I bring you tidings of great joy, for unto you is born this day a savior. Who's Christ the Lord. Now, what does it mean to be saved? It means to be saved from hell, literally, but it also means to be saved or freed, to be able to be what God wants you to be. See, salvation is a word that just means freedom. And in Jesus, you are literally set free, free to be yourself, free to become what God meant for you to be, free to be all that God has for you. So what does Jesus save us from? It's actually a lot of things. He saves us from hell, like I mentioned. But there's a lot more than that, actually. He saves us from hopelessness, the hopelessness of life here, because he has shown us that we have been created for a purpose. 
He saves us from fear because he shows us how we can trust him, how he's always been faithful to his promises. He saves us from worry because he reminds us, I've got it. He saves us from doubt. He saves us from bitterness because he forgives us and teaches us to forgive others. He saves us from guilt through the gift of his forgiveness. He saves us from the expectations of other people because he reminds us that we're living for an audience of one. He saves us from so many things, so many habits and hurts and hang-ups that just, I mean, to be honest, they're just messing up our lives. And on Christmas, Jesus offers us the opportunity to be saved. I mean, that's why he came. He wants to be your Savior. And my prayer today is that you just let him. And all God's people said, amen. Let me pray. God, we love you so much and we thank you for Jesus we thank you for your love for us that sent him here in the first place to save us from the mess that we are, to forgive our sins so that our past can be past, to give us strength, to renew our spirits, to give us hope, to remind us that he's got us in the midst of the storms, to remind us that he's working, always working for the good of those who love him. <laughs> to save us from the mess that we are. Father, we thank you and we celebrate Christmas because it is a testimony that we still matter to you, that you still care about us, and that your desire is that we spend our eternity with you in heaven. And to prove that, you sent us your son, born in a manger, who would suffer, die, and rise again to cement that into reality. And you did it because you love us so much. So we thank you for Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray tonight. And all God's people once more said, amen. Guys, go with this blessing. May our Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious always unto you. And may he look upon you now with his favor and grant you forever his peace. Guys, once again, go in that peace today and serve your Lord always with joy. Amen. Amen.